On this channel, I specialize in making really complex looking images easy to create. So just follow along with my step-by-step -step tutorial of this painting and you will amaze yourself. Okay, so most of the process and the techniques that I'm going to show you during this tutorial could be applied to whatever app or tablet you happen to be using. Having said that, I am using the iPad Pro and the app Procreate. Like I say, I am using the app Procreate, so as such, I'm using their default A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. I also only ever use the Procreate default brushes, and in this example, I'm going to be using the soft brush within airbrushing. It is important you use the same canvas size, otherwise the brush sizes won't correlate between my percentages and your percentages. So within airbrushing, I'm also going to be using the medium brush. Both the brushes are at the top of the list. Within artistic, I'm going to be using the leatherwood brush, but I'm going to modify that and show you how I'm going to do that later on. I'm going to use the, within sketching the 6B pencil and within the organic brushes, I'm gonna use the rainforest brush. In terms of the colors, I have pre-selected a color palette. Each of the colors has what we call a hexadecimal code linked to it. All you need to do is type the codes one at a time into this area, press enter, the color appears up here and then you can piece it together yourself. All the codes are down in the video description alongside a link that takes you to my Patreon page where you can just download the color file for free and it saves you some time. And you'll also find links to my Instagram and a Facebook group where you can share your versions and join a community there as well. And with all that said and done, I'm gonna to go to my layers, layer one, and then my colors. I'm gonna choose the first color that I have on the top row, which is this blue. And I'm just gonna drag and flood filter, fill the entire canvas area. I'm going to create another layer. And with my soft brush with an airbrushing, set to 15% size and 100% opacity. I'm gonna to go to my colors, second color on the top row, and you can see it is a yellow orange, but it is quite a pastel, almost grayed out version of that orange. I'm going to go about halfway across my canvas. Doesn't have to be terribly straight. I'm gonna to go to the adjustments anyway at the top here, press the Gaussian blur, then slide it across to about 50%. Now it does subdue and desaturate it. So I'm gonna to go to that layer and slide it so it duplicates it. And then I'm happier with that result. But really just to condense the layers, I'm gonna tap on the top layer, tap the merge down and it pushes them together. You can pinch the layers together, but it's a bit tricky. So that's a better method. I'm going to create another layer, layer three, go back to my colors and the third color in now, which you can see is slightly more towards the orange and a little more saturated. I'm going to reduce that down to about 10% size, keep it on the 100% opacity, and just slightly to the bottom part of that color we've just had, I'm gonna do a line of this orange. Then to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm gonna blur that in as well to about the 30%, so less. So we've really got a nice vibrant set of transition colors which works for our sky, and it's just a really nice starting point. Okay, I'm gonna create another layer. I'm gonna go from the airbrushing soft brush to the airbrushing medium brush. And on my colors, I'm gonna to move to the bottom row of colors, the first color, which you can see is quite a, a rich blue, but it is very grayed out. I'm gonna put the size to just nudging into 2% size and 100% opacity. Now really at the bottom part of these colors, so just a little bit below halfway, on the overall canvas, I'm gonna draw a line and I'm gonna let it hold at the other side so it snaps to a straight line like so. Now, if you're not entirely sure whether you've managed to get it horizontal, well, you can go to these, the wrench, the spanner symbol, turn on the drawing guide and there you go. Now, if it doesn't default to the 2D grid, you can edit the drawing guide, switch it to the 2D grid and therefore you've got a grid to judge it from. Now, that happens to have lined up perfectly so I'm gonna leave it as it is and turn it back off. I'm gonna stay on the same layer, but I'm gonna to go to my selection tool. I'm gonna to put it on automatic, and just by tapping into this area now, it selects everything within that area, which means I can go to my next color, which is the second color along on the bottom row, and you can see it's, it's a bit more towards a hint of green. It's not really, because again, it's very grayed out, but it's moved away from the purple end. 
and I'm just going to drag that colour to fill the area immediately underneath the dark colour that I've just used. Now both of those are a bit sharp so I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur and just blur them together until about 3% probably is enough. I'm going to go and create another layer, layer 5. I'm going to move from the airbrushing to the organic rainforest brush back to my colours and I'm just going to skip to some of these colours over here. I'm going to go to the colour on the very end which you can see has a warmth to it but it is very greyed out and it's very light as well which is perfect because using this rainforest brush I'm going to have it at about just into the 3% size, 15% opacity and I'm just going to start nudging in and you can probably hear me tapping. I'm just going to tap in some loose textures over here maybe some over here as well. These are going to be largely overpowered by much stronger, more saturated dark and light colours, but it doesn't do any harm just to have a hint of these coming in, in this top area, like that. I'm just going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur it in, well, only about 2%. That should do. Just softens it slightly more. I'll stay on the same layer, but I'm going to switch from that colour to this even warmer colour, you can see it's in the red, but it is very pastel, very washed out. And I'm going to keep it on the same settings, so 3% size and 15% opacity on this rainforest brush. And I'm just going to continue to work into this area a little bit more with this colour now. It just creates a little bit of variation to the colour that we've already used. I don't really need to apply lots of this, just mix and match the two colours together a little bit. Again, doesn't need spending a huge amount of time on either. We could continue to Gaussian Blur just in another percentage just to slightly soften that in. Okay, I'm going to create another layer on top, so this is layer 6. I'm going to switch from these colours to this end of the spectrum now and to this blue colour, which you can see is a, a comfortably in the blue area with just maybe a hint towards the green but not much, but it is again slightly greyed out. Same settings for the brushes, but I'm going to introduce this over at this side, so it's going to go over the top of much of the texture we've just added, which is great. We can space it out a little bit. Let's keep applying this, building it up. Let it be kind of patchy. Maybe I'm just going to have it overlapping and building up a little bit more in this upper region. We can allow it to form bigger shapes too. This is only the lighter color underneath. We're going to use the darker blue in a moment just to further build this up but we can just lay a groundwork of this slightly lighter colour. I'm going to have more of it over on this side too but I'm keeping it quite loose and just fairly easy to apply this kind of technique initially. I will go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in 3%, then I'm going to create a layer on top of that, so layer 7, back to my colours, to this richer darker blue hasn't really changed on the overall hue, but it is darker, it is more saturated. Stay on the same brush, Rainforest, perhaps just a nudge down into the top part of 2%. Size, keep it at 15% opacity. And now I'm going to just start to be a little bit more controlled with this blue. So I don't want to completely cover all of the light blue that I've already added, but I'm adding to it in, in and around, maybe in the center of some of these shapes and just further ramping it up. So you get the two different layers that interplay with each other, certainly. And we just start to tap in some shapes. And you don't have to be overly precious about any of this. You can see I'm just tapping in some texture, letting it build up. And maybe towards this top edge of some of these clouds, we might want to turn the brush size down to the lower part of 2%, and then maybe just be a little bit more controlled in places and just start to refine it a little bit where we feel it needs it. And then back up again, maybe even to the 3% as we come further down and allow it to just keep building. Now I'm doing some of these gestures in quite long strokes as well as the taps and the small shapes. I want some shapes that are gonna be just a bit more stretched out and longer too as we cut across the skyline. I'm going to go to the adjustments of the stage, Gaussian Blur, and blur it in quite significantly actually to about 8% works. And perhaps keep it on a separate layer, so create another layer, layer 8. Stick with the same colour, 
but just be a bit more controlled. So 2% size and again, 15% opacity. And again, use what we've got. So we've got the foundation of clouds now and we can just continue to work into these, building it up, having it interplaying with the layers that we've already created. We want gaps, we want the sense that there's texture in there. We don't want to totally obliterate it. I'm gonna put it up again, actually. The largest part of 2%. And I don't mind some of it breaking free, some little points of texture. Now, I say this regularly when I'm doing clouds, that clouds are not something that you can find one technique or one particular approach and it works for all of your skies because clouds change continuously. So almost every single cloud scene that I've ever created has a different look to it and that's the way it should be too. So even if you're using the same color palettes and pretty much the same techniques, then it's gonna form different shapes and you should allow it to be its own thing. So don't copy slavishly what I'm showing you. This is just a general approach to build up the kinds of shapes and textures that would suit. So as we're saying, just some little breakaway bits of cloud as well. Allow it to fragment into smaller shapes too. And then we're gonna bring that concentration down into this area too. Maybe some thinner, more stretched out shapes. Because that tends to happen in the distance is that you get the same mass of clouds but obviously it's in the distance so it appears thin and it tends to be just lines that cut across a little bit more so if you concentrate on those types of shapes as we get closer to the horizon it really represents distant cloud forms and continue some of them across on this side again allow it to be a little bit more broken and then we'll use a different color for some more of those cloud shapes a little later again i'm going to go adjustments gaussian blur Blur it in maybe about 2%. No, let's go for it, about 3%. I'm just gonna blur it in. Again, adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm gonna blur that in quite significantly still to about 5%. Okay, I'm gonna go back through my layers, go to layer three, and I'm gonna click the plus symbol above layer three. And I'm gonna change the layer properties. So we've got the end symbol here, that when you look here, it represents normal as it's blend mode, but I'm gonna change it and scroll down to the add and you'll notice the little n becomes a little a. What that allows us to do is to apply more vibrant colors. So on this middle row, you can see I've got a selection of vibrant colors here. I'm gonna go for the end one, which is almost yellow, but a hint more orange, but very saturated. And now on this mode, you can see I can apply it more liberally and it really is an intense effect. So I'll just get rid of everything I just added and I'm gonna change it to the airbrushing soft brush again. I'm gonna have it up around the 15% size and really turn this down to about, well, about 15% strength as well, opacity. I want the sun just to be slightly off center, so I'm gonna tap in a few times now this color, just to start to get a sense of where it's placed. And then I can also circle it around a bit. I'm gonna to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur it in to about the 50%. From this layer, layer nine, I'm gonna create a layer above it and also change its layer properties or the blend mode to add. And with the same brush, soft brush, with the same color, I'm gonna reduce the brush size to about 10% and the opacity and strength to about 50%. And in the center of that where I want the sun, I'm just gonna tap it in a few times. That's where the sun area is gonna be. I'm gonna to go to the adjustments, the bloom setting, and I'm gonna scroll that up. And again, I'm gonna to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur that in to about the 30%. Create another layer on top of that. Same process, change the N to the add blend mode. I'm just gonna change the white now for this final intense sun color. But I'm gonna change perhaps to the medium brush too. Have it at around 10% size. I can dial it back a little bit, it doesn't really matter. So about 80% and really define where the sun's going to be. Tap it in a few times until it's super glowy and intense. You can even go to the adjustments and the bloom setting and ramp that up. I'd just put it 100%, why not? And so that's in, created a really intense glow. Okay, on top of layer 11, where I have the brighter sun, I'm going to create another layer. And continuing to use my organic rainforest brush, I'm gonna to go to my colors and I'm gonna use the fourth color in from the right with a brush at 2% size and about 30% opacity strength. 
and I'm just going to continue the cloud effects that I've already been doing, adding more smaller textures, kind of slightly stretched out forms. But it's just going to create a, like a group of different bands and shapes that stretch across this lower region. As we get further away, which equates to further towards that horizon point, then the shapes are going to become thinner and more elongated. And that can be quite dramatically so for some of them. Really just stretch them all the way across like this. And we can go in and thicken it up. Maybe even take it up to the top end of 2%. There's quite a little bit of margin within the 2% itself. You can, along the top edge of it, just give it a slight bit more shape and variety. You extend that across and it can cut in front of the sun. We're going to go over this with another couple of effects for this to gel in and make more sense. And I'm also going to do it down near the horizon line as well. Now, because this layer is underneath the water layers, you can do right up to the very edge and don't worry about going over it. It doesn't make any difference to it. I'm just going to shut down some of the light in this bottom section like this. Maybe turn it back down again to the lower part of 2% and just start to fill in some smaller shapes in here as well. Again, do not worry too much about this. It's just getting a sense of it in place. The actual effect of the light and the colour I'm going to show you soon will actually do a large amount of the work for you. So, you know, the shapes are a little bit important, but not absolutely crucial. I'm doing it really roughly. And of course, we can go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in again to about 5%. I'm going to create a new layer above that. Go back to my colours. I'm going to use the third in from the right this time. And I'm going to do something similar again. Add some more textures even. Start to really tap it in. Why not right. vary up the kind of textures? So I've done some elongated shapes and I'm doing some more kind of blobs, letting it be a bit more broken in places. And I'm going to increase it up to 3% and let it start to merge with some of these colors at the top as well. Back down to the 2%, just merge some of these off to the right as well. Now, I, I appreciate it looks a bit of a mess at the moment, and that's fine. I'm not concerned about that because we're going to create another layer, layer 15. But we're going to change the properties of that layer to the add again by scrolling down. Once you tap that little symbol, it changes from the N to the A. I'm going to switch from my organic to my airbrushing soft brush again, switch from this color to this set of colors now. So I'm going to go for the red, which is the second color. And I'm going to have the brush quite small at 2% and the opacity at really low, about 5%. And I'm just going to start working in to these areas now, especially where it starts to overlap in the sun area, because we don't really want any dark colors immediately in front of the sun. So you can just start to tap in front of anything that goes over that sun area now and it will just start to increase the warmth and bleach it out. And you can just start to tap that into the areas immediately below as well. And we can extend that color all the way across as required. We can do it in the gaps between these clouds, but also sort of feather that in, texture that in over the top of some of the cloud areas too, to really sort of subdue it. We could even take this brush, put it up to about 20%, still on only the 5% opacity, and just tap that in a few times just to kind of melt in a lot of the surrounding areas to that glow and then up to about 40 percent and just a couple of taps there not too many just a collection like so and that really starts the process of bringing it together a little bit more i'm going to stay on the same layer but i'm going to move along to the orange which is the third in turn it back down to the two percent and again we can start start to just Dissolve some of these colors in the very center initially, but we can extend the impact of that upwards too. So there's going to be perhaps just sections that are filtering through. We can do another layer on top of this later, but the bits where it's just catching perhaps the bottom edge of some of these clouds on this layer, we can extend that all the way across the canvas, in fact, and all the way across to each side. Maybe just go over some of that red color just we had initially and just soften that a little bit. I'm going to increase that to 5%, still only at the 5% opacity. I'm just going to go across the bottom just to soften 
everything along that horizon line a little bit more. And then also just softening anything around that sun more immediately as well, like this. Now it's starting to head towards the kind of effect that will be good, but I'm gonna create a layer above that. And I realize there's a lot of layers and depending on what kind of iPad you're using, you may wish to go back to some of your layers, say for example, the sun, and you may wish to condense some of them that no longer need to be on separate layers. So I'm gonna to go to layer 11 that had the brightest white sun, tap on it, merge down. So now you've got two layers merged together. I'm gonna to tap on that layer as well and merge down. So all the sun layers are pretty much on one layer now. So it just gives us a bit more freedom, more layers to play with. You could even go back to some of those earlier layers, so layers two and three, and again, tap on the, the top version of that and merge down. So all of that is on one layer too. It just helps as you go along. So I'll go back to the new layer that I created, which was layer 16, which is above all of these bright features that I've added. And on this layer, I'm gonna switch back to the duller colors that I've been using because I can start to use that just to tease in from the edges a little bit more of that dark hue. And I'll probably do it with the soft brush now, set down to 2% size and keep it really quite low, but maybe a little bit higher at around 10%. And I can just begin to nudge some of that in, just have it creeping in a little more in places, start to reclaim some of these dark shapes in addition to all those light forms but just go careful with it. We don't want to overdo it still. And obviously we have two colors that we're using. So the third in from the right as well. Perhaps even the third color is a touch more useful for this kind of these kind of features. Now we can just go in and start subtly adding textures. And if you want it to be a bit bolder, you can put it up to maybe about 30%. Once you're starting to feel a little braver, a bit more confident, and you can really get some of those solid shapes back in there as well. So it's an interplay between what you remove and what you add back in, and you'll find hopefully the right balance between those two. So I'm just teasing some of this back in, still at a relatively low opacity, and I am pressing lightly. Please bear in mind that if you're quite heavy handed, although I've set it to 30%, the brush could be quite dark. I'll show you in a different area, quite dark, or if I'm pressing lightly, you'll hardly see it at all. So I do generally quest press quite lightly. So be aware of that. If you are a little bit heavier handed and you know this, then you might want to just try and reduce how heavy you're pressing or dial back the percentages from what I'm showing you to adjust for your type of gesture. But I would recommend that you try to match what I'm doing. It's just gonna keep it a little bit more straightforward to you. But if you really find that difficult, then you can always adjust the percentages to suit you too. Now on layer 15, I had the blend mode to add. So I had some of those bright colors coming in. Underneath that, I had some of the cloud textures on layer 14. So I'm gonna go back to layer 14 using the third color in with my soft airbrush still, still at 2% size and 30% opacity. So I haven't changed it in those regards. And even though it's a different color, because we've got the add property on top on that other layer, it means that we can start to build in this more subdued color, but it, it's going to appear like we're adding this really vibrant orange into the sky. So we can start to continue on that layer, bringing in the textures, and we're not gonna add anything inappropriate in terms of tone and hue. It's gonna continue the bleached out effects of this nice orange into this area, which is ideal. And we can continue to build up the amount of texture, add some more of this into this region. And just shut down perhaps some of that sun. We do want it as an incredibly vibrant element, but I don't want it unobscured. I want some of these features to kind of overlap over the top. I want the sun to be burning through these clouds, but I don't want it to be unchallenged, if you like. I want it to be kind of almost like in a battle with the, the clouds and it's still managing to pierce through. I think it adds a little bit more drama that way. So I'm just building up these textures in these lower areas, shutting down some of the brighter shapes. Again, I can alternate. So if I'm using the third, I'm gonna go for an even darker color, the fourth in. Again, it's on a layer underneath the layer with the blend mode shifted and changed, so it's not really gonna be at its full strength. It's gonna blend really nicely with those other vibrant colors and create this lovely effect. So again, I'm just building it up. Now, your clouds don't need to look exactly the same as this, as I've already said. Just keep at it however it looks. If you're getting the kind of lighting effect, then it's probably heading in the right direction. 
Okay, I'm just gonna to go to the top of my sky, layers, so the very top here, I'm gonna click the plus symbol, change the blend mode from the normal to the add another time, stay on the soft brush, switch to these colors again. I'm probably gonna go for the yellow, orange, 2% size, but down again to about 10% opacity. And now on top, I just want to start bringing in some strong highlights. In fact, it might be a bit too much. I'm gonna to go to the orange that's in the middle. Just retain some of that warmth. And I'm just gonna use it to start picking up some highlights on the clouds that are immediately going to be interplaying with that sun. I can just select the bottom edge of some of these shapes just so it catches the highlight. We can use the red as well. We can use all three of those colors. The red is perhaps quite a good place to start with because it's not quite as light or as vibrant. Further extend that outwards a little bit again, back down to the orange and just nudge in a little bit more of its impact in other areas of the cloud as well. You don't need to overdo this. Just slightly further extend the drama of it here and there. And back in with the yellow again, because the yellow is just obviously the more intense, so you can add a little bit more of that too. Why not? Just again, slightly bleach out some of these darker colors on top if you feel that you need to. Just ramp that brightness in a little bit more in places. So it's a mixture between adding dark colors back on top and then peeling back, dissolving them away. With some of these really vibrant colors too. Okay, I'm gonna go back through some of these layers and just condense some of them downwards like I was doing before. So I can go to my layer eight, maybe layer seven, and layer six, and even layer five, why not? And I'm just gonna condense all of those so it's easier to pinch when there's a lot. And you can see I've just condensed them down. Now you haven't got too many layers again to play with. So from the top layer, I'm gonna create another layer. Now please bear in mind, because I'm doing all these pinching together, the layer numbers isn't necessarily gonna correspond anymore. So I'll identify the layer I'm, I'm using by name, but it isn't necessarily in order anymore, but it's not a problem. Now on this top layer, I'm gonna to switch to my Leatherwood brush within the Artistic Brushes. I'm gonna tap on it, and I'm gonna change the spacing to about 40%. As you can see from the visualization, it just creates more of a gap between those different elements. But another aspect I'm going to change is the grain, because if I turn the scale of that grain up, you'll probably notice on camera, that this texture kind of appears like a canvas grain, and I don't want any of that, so I'm gonna scale it down to none. Now what I can do, if I go back to my colors, I've used these first two colors for the horizon line and the actual main body of the water. I'm gonna to go to the third color along, and with a scale, or a size rather, of about 2%, that will work. I'm gonna turn that percentage down to about 15 opacity, and I'm just gonna start building in this texture from the very top all the way across. Now you can zoom in a little bit, just so you can see it a bit better, but I'm just going to bring this in as a texture all the way across the horizon line. And it's a kind of texture that you can keep building up and going over, and I'm gonna blur it in slightly anyway. So this is just getting an initial grain in there almost of our sea, and that the ripples that obviously are on the sea surface going off into the distance, and you can just start to build up. I'm not gonna see these edges because I'm gonna do kind of sand and grass that obscure it anyway. So, but it's good to practice at the edges. Then when you come to the middle bit, you just got a little bit more confidence. And it doesn't matter if there's some stripes that kind of emerge cutting across because you will get bands and stripes within water anyway. So that's absolutely fine. And that could even add to the effect. But you can do it in long gestures like so. And then I'm gonna turn it up from 2% to 3% and continue that a little bit as we get closer. Something like this, and again, you can keep going over this quite a bit more in this slightly lower region, building it up. And I'm gonna to go to my adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur it in about 3% initially. Create another layer on top. Change the layer properties or the blend mode from normal to add yet again. And we're gonna bring some of the light, obviously, from the sun downwards. So I'm gonna go for the, the red, first of all, and I probably need to turn it back down to the 2% size again, but it is a really strong feature once you start with the add blend mode. So I'm just gonna turn it down to 5% opacity strength and build in some of this red initially. I don't want it to be overpowering to begin with. I'll do a few passes with this red. It's not 
quite as noticeable initially anyway. It's just bringing in an element. Then I can switch from the red to the orange. Perhaps just keep it initially for the distance on that 2% and just start to sweep some of this in, certainly in this region where the sun is relating to it. And a touch more at the 3%, just like we were doing before. And I'm gonna try and concentrate this now more so where the sun is and just start to bring that in a little bit more into this region. So downwards from where the sun actually is. Go over it a few more times, like so. Keep building it up. It's on a very low percentage, so you can just keep ramping up that effect and it will work well. It's a really great way of building in that kind of texture. It's just so many points of grains of little waves that would be on that surface that if you were to do it manually, it would take a long time. So it's really useful. So I'm gonna ramp it up to about 10%, which sounds not very much, but actually in this context will be quite powerful. Go over it a few more times, like so. Again, I don't want to do too much. And then I'm gonna change, stay on the same layer, change to my airbrushing, soft brush turn it down to the 1% size and stay at the 10% opacity. And I can just, as and when, just tap in and be a bit more controlled for want some highlights. Why not even ramp it up more? Let's put it at say 30%, which is pretty strong compared, but I can really just tap in some deliberate highlights now and just channel it down in a bit more of a controlled way. But obviously we've got the texture that we've already created as a guide, so we can focus it immediately underneath that sun. Just have a, a smaller gestures initially. And again, a little bit of blur, so adjustments goes in blur. Blur it in maybe 2%, just to take the edge off it. I'll come back to that and tweak that a little bit more, but create another layer, back to my colors. Now I've used these first two colors at the bottom. Again, I'm gonna go for this third color, but again, with the soft brush, I'm just going to start to bring in with the same size at 1% and 30% opacity, start to build in some sideways dashes, some textures that just cut across so we're getting some more ripples and kind of waves cutting in as well. Maybe I'll even nudge it up to the 2%. We're just getting some breaks, some disturbance in the water and then up to about 3% size, still at the 30% opacity. I'll do a bigger gesture underneath that too. And then maybe back down to the lowest part of 2% and another smaller stripe as well. Just building in a series of stripes that represent sort of water ripples and waves as they start to crash into the beach area. Now it's gonna be mainly obscured, but you do need a hint of that coming in. Now, where you start to get water sort of rising and crashing over, the highlights are gonna be a bit more impactful. So I will probably go back to layer 30 when we were using those, go back to my orange initially with my 2% size and 30% opacity. And again, at the top edge of some of these waves, just it's gonna catch the light a little bit more, like so. And then maybe I'll change to the yellow as well. Turn it just to be a little bit more precise into the 1%, and then right in the center there, it's gonna be shining the absolute most vibrant there. I'm gonna to go to my layers at the very top and create a new layer. With my airbrushing medium brush, I'm gonna change color to this black color. And I'm gonna put it at about 4% size and about 80% opacity. And I'm just going to start to mark in where I want these land features to be. It's a really silhouetted shape initially, but we're going to reduce a lot of that with highlighted colors, but I think I always prefer to start with the darker color. I think it just creates the forms really dramatically to begin with. And then you can always just subdue them back anyway, something like this. And then I'll just fill them in just to separate the background sky elements from these foreground features. It just helps you get a sense of the overall composition a little better, like so. And then I'm gonna change from my airbrushing to my sketching brush, 6B pencil. And I'm not gonna change layer. I'm gonna use the same layer I'm gonna put it at about 40% size, about 40% strength opacity. And just along this top edge, I'm gonna just build in some silhouetted blades of grass as well. Now, I'm gonna to try to do it in clumps and tufts, so you get a collection, 
but generally I'm going to I'm going to do it across the whole thing but maybe it just be a little bit denser in some areas and then just a little bit of the sense of a gap and I'll zoom in a little bit now I'm going to blur this layer I often do this I'm going to blur this layer anyway but I do need some tufts and grass that goes all the way along the very top and then I'll blur it and then I'll re-go over it I'll just try to change the directions a little bit have them overlapping Again, like I say, it's okay to have them collecting a little bit more in some places than others. There's nothing wrong with that. And you can have clumps of blades of grass that all seem to bend in a particular direction, but then obviously you'll have some that just counter that and cut across it too. This is only initial, just to build up a sense of it, and then we can further refine it. So don't worry too much about this first one. And we can cut across, maybe turn this slightly down to about 30%, and slightly down to about 30% there too. This is slightly more removed and distant, not massively so, but and you can just put in some tufts here as well. Like I say, we'll, we'll continue this effect with a couple of different colors once we've blurred it in anyway. So we'll go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur it in, probably to about the 5%. I think that, that helps. We'll go to our top layer and create another layer again. So now layer 16, and I'll go to my colors again, and I've got this dark green, so again, with the 6P pencil, I'm probably going to put it back up to the 40%, and it needs to be stronger to be even visible, so I'm going to put it about the 50%, and I'm just going to build some of this in as well. So just to vary up some of this grass texture so it doesn't look totally flat and dead, I need to add some of this green in there as well. And same premise, we just need to change direction a little bit. It doesn't matter if it goes up and over the top of the original blades that we've added. They were just a foundation layer anyway. And this is a subtle layer because it is quite dark and it doesn't really stand out massively. So the combinations of these different layers are going to be what works for us. And again, we can just start to build them in over this side too, in areas. You don't need to do it on across the whole thing. We've got some lighter greens that we really will ramp this up with as well. And so again, adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur that in. Slightly less, I think about 3% for that layer. I might just merge that down just to keep the layers simple. So we've got all of that grass and silhouette on one layer now. I think what I'd like to start doing is building in some of the other highlights. So I'm gonna create a layer on top. And with my airbrushing soft brush, I'm gonna go back to my colors. So I've used these colors and I will go back to the greens, but I'm gonna start using these colors here. So I've got a darkest color to begin with, which is the middle of these three colors on the right. And you can see it's like a blue purple, but very dark. With my soft airbrush, at about 3% size and about 50% opacity. And I'm just gonna start dappling in some kind of texture. I want it generally to start building in the direction of my sand. So you can just start to imagine it streaking in this direction initially. So you can imagine the sand's just sort of falling down that kind of hill. But then on this side, I'm gonna have it just as generally a bit more broken and less obvious in terms of the direction. So I can just dapple it in a bit more randomly. I'm really not painstaking over this. I just want to create a, a broken surface really. So it isn't flat, it doesn't look too boring. But I can also encroach into some of these shapes, just nibble away and start to define some of the little grass tufts a little bit more, perhaps. I could do this over here to an extent as well. I've got lighter colors that will also be useful for that, but there's no harm in beginning that process like so. And even that, I think, goes a long way to start to build up the effect. But we've got more colors we can add to this. So I'm not gonna change layer again for this. I'm gonna immediately switch from the darkest version to this slightly lighter one. Again, more distinctly in the purple area, but very washed out and dark. So I'm gonna reduce it slightly to about 30% strength, and I'm gonna have it slightly more controlled at 2% size, because this is gonna stick out more. So again, we can start to building some of this mottled texture, building up a grain, Again, I'm going with the general direction that I had before, just tapping it in, allowing it to build up. I think I'm going to be just mindful of not wanting to add too much light into the scene. I think it kind of works that it, it is a darker, more silhouetted area overall, even probably at the end. I may get carried away with adding light to it. We'll see, but you can start to build it up. I mean, if you wanted to keep it really subtle like this, without going overly into the detail and into the light in the silhouetted area, you could get away with that. And actually, I think the drama then gets pushed into the sky. But I'm probably going to continue to add some of these features in here as well. So build up some of these textures. It's really quite loose and free. It's, it's good fun because it's easy. 
don't really need to deliberate over this much at all. Not at this point anyway. And maybe some bigger strokes. I'll put it up to 3% as we get a bit nearer to us. It can be a bit bolder. Allow it to coalesce into slightly bigger, flatter versions. Something like this. Probably going to merge that down. Why not? Again, just controlling our layers. I prefer to do it on separate layers first. And if it goes wrong, you can just delete the whole layer or whatever it need be. But once you're happy with it, I like to just control it and condense it down. When I'm doing my own painting, that's exactly the way that I work. I don't always do that with my tutorials, but I think this is involving a lot of layers. So I'm going to just help you by condensing them down as we go. So I'll create a new layer above that. Go back to my colors at the bottom here. And I've got that color at the end, which is quite a lot lighter. So I'm going to have that perhaps at the 2% size and keep it at 30% opacity, but it, it is going to be significantly lighter. Perhaps I'll even have it at the lowest part of 2% just before it nudges into the one. So about there. And I'm just going to allow this to be slightly more pointed and build up this texture quite gradually. I can allow some streaks. It doesn't all have to be just tiny dots. It can gather together and be in long streaks of this texture, but I'm just going to build it in initially quite gradually. And again, it just ramps up the amount of texture. Texture is really useful sometimes. If you just create a lot of points of texture, it adds a lot of depth and you don't really need to agonize over those individual marks. But, but just by virtue of the fact there's a lot of it, it creates that sense of depth. I think it helps with the believability. So again, I can just, I'm just scribbling in some areas too, as well as the points of texture, which really creates that disruption. I'm gonna just scribble in some slightly flatter areas too where it perhaps just condenses and you get some unbroken areas. Sometimes where you get a bit of a sand, almost like an avalanche, like a fall of sand, you might just get a smoothed out area. So you need to add those in the mix as well. Otherwise you won't get the variety perhaps that you, you know is going to increase that believability. I think with any kind of texture, variety is key. And if it's too much of exactly one thing all over, then it's just gonna create a kind of false, too regimented, too uniform kind of look. So vary it up a little bit. And also within some of these areas, you might get sides that slightly point toward, towards the light and then other bits that are a bit more in the shadow. So maybe you can have just a variation like undulations in some of these areas. And again, you can reclaim some of these bits as well from the tufts of grass and get in there and just separate some of these dark shapes out, tease them apart so you're getting little gaps, why not? And likewise, you can go back in with a darker color. So we've got this black and I'm gonna stay on the same layer and I'm just gonna, with the same settings and the brush start to point in some darker features, some more of this grass, perhaps. Just reclaim, sculpt our little environment until we're happy with it. And again, you don't need to stick slavishly to what I'm showing you. It is your little world. So you add as many of these or as few of these as you're happy with. If your texture seems to have steered a certain way and it looks good, then you know, go off in your own direction if it suits it. With all of my tutorials, I'm about kind of demonstrating how to do certain things and my process, and hopefully that's beneficial. And you can follow it, you know, really accurately to get the same image, and that's fine. But don't be, don't be timid, don't be afraid of, of steering it off in your own direction if it suits. I think there's a lot to be said about taking some aspects and then running with them in your own direction too. If you're feeling a bit more adventurous and confident, then go for that. I'm going to add just a few darker points here. So maybe I'll put the percentage up to 40% and the, sh the size down to the lower part of 2%. And we can add some darker points here in and amongst this texture, especially as we get closer to us. Perhaps that's even a little bit too small. So, so certainly within the 2%, we'll add some more of this texture. Some little points, why not? And same over here. I mean, I'm doing this in a relatively quick sense to give you the overall impression, like I was saying. I could probably spend a long time really getting lost in these minute details. And it's the kind of thing that genuinely I do love to do. But I'm just trying to rattle through them a little bit just to get you the, the overall impression and then you can play with it to your heart's content and really refine it if you want to. So I'm gonna to go to my layers and create another layer on top, back to my colors. And I've got this lighter green now, which is gonna be useful. I'll probably go back to my sketching 6B, 40% size and 50% opacity as it was before. And I'm just gonna start building in some of this lighter green colors at the very top, just where it's catching the light a little bit more. And again, it's just 
about creating a slight effect, we can soften this in with the soft brush just as we have been doing, but perhaps we just want to create some highlights along the top edge of some of this grass, bring in some lighter green here and there as well, so it's not too flat. And as well as that, once you've got some of those blades of grass in, there's no harm in going to the airbrushing soft brush and just using that same green to kind of extend that a little bit more. So I've got it at 2% size and about 30% opacity. And I can just be a bit more expressionistic and just tap some of that in. So a combination between the actual blades that you're painting in and then something a little bit more, just points of, of texture, of blobs really. And the combination of the two is really going to gel together and create that effect without you having to draw every blade. And I'm gonna create a layer on top and I'm gonna use the black color initially with my airbrushing soft brush. I'm just gonna put it up to about 4% size and about 30% opacity. And I'm just gonna blot in a more foreground grass clump, but I'm just gonna allow it to soften perhaps a little bit at the top. Then I'm gonna to go to my, well, maybe the light green and just feather that in with taps and just feather it in at the very top like that. Maybe go to this brown, which is fourth in from the right. And just, again, a few notes, a few touches of that to begin with. Then I'm going to switch, stay on the same layer, switch to my sketching 6B pencil with the black colour, which is fourth in on the left. And perhaps just create some strands of grass here. So I've got that 100% size and 50% opacity. And just with this black, I'm bringing in some blades that cut in, mix, and just give us something else to look at here in the foreground perhaps. Obviously it's important, we do get some individual blades of grass here in the foreground. It really just sells the rest of the scene a little bit better. I don't want to get too bogged down in it, so I'm just going to switch to perhaps this brown colour now. And over the top of some of these darker colours, then that should really stand out. And we can just work into this grain a little bit, work into this grass. Obviously I have some blades that cut in front of each other. You don't want them all completely lined up and uniform because it won't be believable. And then some green, so I'll try that light green. And just cut over the top of this to some extent as well. And like I say, just add some of this green and brown and black all together and it just will really help the idea of the kind of textures we're creating. Maybe go for this dark green as well, just a little bit like this, back to the black, one or two. Why not just have them cutting through still here and there. And we can have the ends of the grass, just one or two with the kind of the seed bits at the end. And with that layer, I can just adjust with the Gaussian blur, just a hint. I don't want to do too much. I think 2% is enough just to soften it in. I'm going to go to my top layer. I'm just going to create a new layer on top, change the blend mode from the normal to the add. Once again, soft brush with an airbrushing, and I'm gonna have it here at 2% size and about 3% opacity, so really low. And from the center of the sun, I'm just gonna do a few lines cutting out. We're just gonna, obviously if it was like a photograph, it would just perhaps create a, a hint of a lens flare. I'm just gonna have them cutting out maybe from that point. I don't wanna overdo it, I just wanna have tweaks here and there. So from the center, just cutting out and I can then change to my orange and perhaps just ramp it up slightly. So again, this needs to be incredibly subtle. It's so easy to overdo little features like this and it just becomes way too powerful and just interfere with the overall look. But just a hint of it just, I think, sells the illusion of it being quite photographic. I think we're, we're pretty much familiar with what photographs look like. So it definitely helps with that kind of illusion. And then on the same layer, I'm just gonna turn that brush up to 50% size, still at 3% opacity. And I'm just gonna tap in a couple of times just to kind of bring some of that glow, just slightly obscure some of the colors there. And if I just toggle the layer on and off, you'll see the effect and it is subtle, but it just kind of brings it all together. And one more layer, and I'm gonna use this layer just to refine. Perhaps I should put it under the, the sun glare on the sun glow that we've just created so it doesn't look too odd and I'm just going to use the soft airbrush to go in and just further add features texture so soft airbrush 2% size I'm going to keep it maybe about 10% strength and just here and there for example 
some subtle textures, bringing them out a little bit more. Again, this is something that you can play around with to your heart's content. I don't think it needs a great deal more, but this is the kind of thing that I love to play around with, so. Maybe just soften it in here. In fact, I'm gonna to go to this darker color third in from the bottom row and just maybe bring those regions together by just soften them in a little bit more like that. I think that helps. I'm just gonna go up with this first blue on the bottom row, still with the airbrush, 2% size, 10% opacity, and I'm just gonna work into this sky area a little bit more too. And it is on the top layer, so just be mindful. You don't want to cut across other features that you've already created. You don't want to damage them. So just go a little bit carefully with that. I'm just building in some slight, more kind of overbearing clouds, building up the drama just to create a hint more of that contrast where I feel it needs it. Okay, I'm gonna leave that landscape here at this point. It's definitely something I could continue to work into, but hopefully I've helped get you to the point where you understand some of the, the process and the effects. Please don't forget to hit the thumbs up, also the subscribe and the bell notification to make sure you are notified of all my future videos. Thanks for watching, I shall see you back here soon. Bye for now.